In this video, I'm going to explain how to set up a OAuth 2 client credentials grant. I'm using AWS Cognito for this uh, testing for this POC, but you can basically use any identity provider that is available in the market like Okta or Auth0 or any other identity provider. So the main goal of this video is to understand how the OAuth 2 client credentials grant works and whichever identity provider you use they might be using a different technology to implement it but all these identity providers will follow this particular RFC which is a uh, which is being uh, referred widely by all the industry experts so all these identity providers use this RFC as the baseline to implement this particular uh, OAuth 2 specific grant whether it's a client credentials or a implicit or authorization code so let's get back to the AWS management console and see how to set up a client credentials grant so you can log into your AWS management console and type in search for the Cognito service and then select this manage user pools right now i don't have any user pool here you can click here to create a user pool and you can give any random name uh, which is unique uh, so for example here i will try what to test uh, whether it's available what test yes it is available so my pool got created but in case this name is not available you can use a different name so once this uh, user pool is created the next step is to set a domain name so what is this domain name it's basically a url to your particular user pool so if you look at aws uh, uh, it is majority of the organizations in the world so each organization might have a different domain and each organization have a might have a separate user pool which was created for their own organization so in order to identify that particular user you need to you need a domain to access that particular user pool. so so you need to create a domain uh, to your user pool and here you can give some random name so i will try the same OAuth test looks like it's not available so i will use OAuth test one and that is available so i will just click save changes so now this is the url the globally unique url to access my particular my user pool which i created here and as i said like multiple organizations use aws and multiple organizations use aws cognito service and each organization can have one or more user pools with different domains configured for their user pool to access their user pool so this is the url to access the user pool which i just created and so the next step is to create a oauth2 client and how to do that incognito is something like you go to this app clients option click add an app client and again here you can give any name so let's just give something like a product client and these are all some uh, token expiry minutes uh, all those things which we don't have to worry about at this point of time so let's just go here and click create app client so this client got created now and we have this app client so the next step here is to create a resource server so if you go here you can create a resource server something like let's say you are creating a api application to search list of products read the product details create a product something like that so you can create some a resource server for your product api and it can be something like uh, the name of the resource server is product the identifier of the resource server can be something like api dot uh, product dot example dot com and this can be your API URL, uh, which you have set up for your uh, API, for your API application. And then for this identifier, you can have multiple scopes. So scopes are basically used for 
what you say to secure the apis or it, like what you say like for example you want to allow a certain application to access only read apis read product apis you can assign only certain scopes to that application and say okay this particular application can access only read apis and similarly you can set up write api you can set up access to write api search product apis like that and everything is controlled based on scopes let's not get into the detailed uh the description of what a scope is uh, so as of now i will just create some simple scopes which anyone can easily understand so you have a read product then you have a let's say a search product and then you can have something like a right which is basically updating or creating a product create or update a product so now you have uh, three scopes and i created this uh, resource server and now let's add certain scopes to that uh, product client which we created and uh, i'm going to uh, set up only client client credentials for now so i will just select the client credentials option here and here i let me first start with just a single scope so let's assume this particular client which is accessing this api has only read permissions so basically it can only read a product it cannot search or it cannot create or update a product so in in uh, in this particular case i will provide access to this client only to read a product so i will select this option read a product and click save changes so now this client has the access this client has access to the api api.product.example.com to only read a product but not to write a product that is create or update a product or search a product so now let's see how to get a token uh, using this particular client credentials uh, in order to get the token you need the uh, like let's go to the aws cognito documentation so you just search for aws cognito token endpoint and uh, you can go to this particular page and here you will see the documentation on how to call this api to get a access token which you can then pass to a api application then the api application will use that access token to all over deny access so let's like i'm going to use postman here uh, so i have a postman here for uh, testing this flow postman like most of you know it's one of the uh, best tools that is available in the market for testing these type of uh, apis so so using postman let's let's try to get the access token using this client credentials so if you look at this token endpoint right it says to get a token you need to access this particular endpoint which ends with slash worth to slash token so what is the base domain or the based url for this particular endpoint so that's where this domain name comes into picture right uh, which we created in the initial step so let me copy this domain and put it in the postman url so here i will go here and it's worth test one dot auth so this is the url to my user pool like whatever user pool i created and let me copy the remaining url from this documentation and put it here so this is the url to get a token but then there are some multiple steps which are mentioned here you can go through the documentation it, so it says the the you you need to pass a header a authorization header which is a base 64 in code of your client id colon client secret so it's basically the basic authorization that's what they are saying so with postman you can easily set up the basic authorization just go to the authorization tab go to your and select basic auth so here you need to enter uh, the client id and the secret from from here 
so if you go to this app client section you can get the client id and then you can get the secret so that is the username and that is the password so now now you have set the authorization header here and uh, if you go to this uh, documentation it says we need to send certain parameters request parameters in the body and the content type should be application form url encoded so how to do that in postman just go to body select x www form url encoded you will get this type of a table where you can enter you can copy this parameter put it here and then we are actually testing the client credentials grant so in our case it is client credentials and then you need to pass the client id let's get the client id from here and let's try to test and see what happens okay there is some issue maybe something wrong with the url that i am trying to hit uh, let's see what the issue is so uh, i have the authorization header here and then i have the body here oh sorry so this is so this is the step so if you look at here in the documentation they have clearly mentioned it says post i tried a get by mistake so that's why i got that error so now i got the access token and so the, these are some things that you will like when you're trying to test these are some issues that you might encounter like instead of post if you try to do a get on this url then aws cognito will return an error like again i will show it here like whatever error i got so i basically got something like this and then i went to the preview it just said error was encountered it didn't give too much of information but then somehow i found out okay i gave a wrong http method but anyway like once i changed the http method i got the token so you can copy this token this is basically a jwt token so that is a very good website jwt.io to decode this token and view the contents of this token so if i decode this token you see all these details so the so this is the scope which i added if you remember this is the api url and this is the scope that i added to that particular client so if i go here to the app client settings so for this particular client i provided access only to the product dot read scope so basically this client can access only this api which is basically reading a product but it cannot search a product or create or update a product so that's that is the scope that you see in this access token and then there are certain other details so if you look at the authentication time that is the time when you fired that query from postman and then you have the expiry date which says uh, december 4 2021 5 39 it's approximately 60 minutes so that's what you saw here like uh, when i created the client here by default it was having an access token expiration of 60 minutes so that's what you see here and then there are certain then you see the client id here if you see this client id it will exactly match with what is available here so so these are some details so let's slightly tweak the changes so instead of one hour i will change it to 180 minutes right and uh, i saved the app client changes and then let's make some additional changes as well so let's let's say uh, now this particular client needs access to even search a product not just read a product so i will provide access to search api as well so i click save changes and now i will go back to this postman and click uh the send button and i will get a new access token now if you see the access token the newly generated access token the length of the token itself has increased that itself indicates something has changed so let's see what has changed again if i go back to this jwt.io so if you look at this access token again 
now I got two scopes, which is a product.search, product.read. So if I try to now access that API, api.product.example.com to search a product, I will get access to search a product. And similarly, I will get access to read a product as well. But I won't get access to create or update a product. So whichever client application is using this particular uh, client credentials, uh, uh, that is the client ID and secret to get the access token, will get access only to these two APIs, which is product.search and product.read, but it won't get access to create or update the product. Now let's look at the expiry and see if it changed to three hours. So if I look at the time now, it says 7.42 December, it's in CST. So, so if you have, like if you saw it already increased by another couple of hours. So basically it changed to 180 minutes. So, so it entirely depends on your use case. Like if you think uh, you, you want very highly secure application if you are like using this access token to protect a very highly secure api you can reduce this to just even five minutes like you basically like uh, the idea here is if someone steals the access token then the maximum they can do is use that access token to hit that api for five minutes but not more than that so 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 this uh, like whatever expiration you decide for this access token all those things it entirely depends on your use case what type of application you are building whether it's a very highly sensitive application or it's a very it's not a very highly sensitive so it's fine even if you give 180 minutes so it entirely depends on the business requirements the security requirements so w whatever you want to do but if you look at this uh, description here the minimum is five minutes and the maximum is one day the reason they have kept a maximum of one day is because access tokens are generally not long-lived tokens like we don't want client applications to just generate a token today and use it for next one year uh, like they we want the client applications to generate a token whenever they want to access the api then discard the token or keep the token for maybe next few minutes until they want until uh, they think uh, it's uh, like valid or something so so that's why the access tokens are not very long-lived tokens and we should never use an access token like even if some identity provider allows a longer duration for access token it's better to keep it low that is the expiration time to pretty low again it depends on the security and business requirements so so if you look at uh, so uh, so this is the client credentials flow there like it's one of the most basic oauth2 grants that you can see in uh, the oauth2 protocol the oauth2 authorization protocol but it is a very powerful grant i would say it's used widely like it's used in many use cases like um if if we have to talk about a simple use case right where we can use this what to client credential grant i can just quickly go to your lucid chart and show you so let me log in and let me open a blank document so where we can basically use this what to client credentials grant let's let's see let's just i will just like i use lucid charts widely i like the i like the lucid charts so you can use any tool you want it's entirely up to you so let's say we have a api application let's take that same product api and then let's say this product api has something like let's say it has a read and then then it has a write and then it has a Search. Okay. 
and if you remember what we did here we created a resource server called api dot product dot example dot com with a read search and product so let's so in this particular case uh, so we have this and uh, let me actually Let me type it uh, API dot product dot example dot com. So this is the API, and then you have these three APIs, three endpoints within that API. And let's say there is some application which wants to access this, it can be any application. Let's just name it web app. And then you have the users who are accessing that application. And now let's say the uh, user is trying to log into that application. Generally, those applications will be using some identity provider. And in this case, let's uh, consider the same AWS Cognito IDP. Let's say they log in using a credential that is created in AWS Cognito IDP. I have not done that, but like if you basically go to the AWS Cognito users and groups, you can create users and then integrate your application with AWS Cognito. And then users can log into that web application using those credentials. And so now the user has logged in and now trying to access some page where they want to search a product. So this web app now needs to make a call to the APIs. So it can be any API. It can be any API within this api.product.example.com. But in order to access this API, it needs to pass an access token. And that is the uh, access token that we, that is the access token that we saw here. So this, this type of access token. So now when the access token is passed and like how this web app will get the access token, basically like it will again call AWS Cognito slash token endpoint, right? So, so it will call the AWS Cognito slash token endpoint, which we saw here, right? In Postman. So this particular API, you, you can check the curl request here. So if you look at this curl request, you have all the details. So basically with that web app needs to make a call to this endpoint, HTTPS, whatever it is like slash watch to token with the basic authorization header and then the client ID, all those details. And it will get this access token. And then this web app needs to pass this access token to this API application to access one of these APIs. It can be a read api it can be a write api or a search api and what this api application will need to do is it needs to decode this jwt access token which is passed in the request header or however it is passed generally it is passed in the request header and then it needs to uh, do some certain validations to make sure the token is valid the signature in the token is valid all those things and if everything is fine then it the API application needs to check if this particular web app has the scopes to access a certain API. So if it has to access the read API, it should have the read scope. If it has to access the search API, it should have the search scope. And if this web app, if the user is trying to create a product using this web app and the web app makes a call to this API, then this access token should have the scope, the right scope to create a product. So whatever actions this user performs in this web app to read a pro like search a product, then read the product details or create a new product, this web app will cre create an access token using this token endpoint with AWS Cognito IDP. 
and then pass the access token to this API application. So this API application can be a totally different application when compared to this web app. It, it need not be part of this web application. This web application can just have the UI screens for this user to access. And this API application can be a totally different application. It can be like, for example, this web app can be written in some UI frameworks like Node, like React.js, AngularJS, whatever it is. And this API application can be totally written in a different technology. It can be Java or .NET or Node.js, whatever, whatever works out. So the main, uh, the, uh, the main point to note here is Cognito IDP provides the access token and then uh, uh, this access token is passed to this API application. This API application will validate the access token. Like while validation, during the validation, it might also call this AWS Cognito IDP to get certain details from AWS Cognito IDP. So, so when it is validating the token during validation, it will also call AWS Cognito IDP. And then after validation, it will either allow or deny access for this particular web app to different API endpoints within this API application. So if you look at this entire flow, right, this web app is actually the, uh, I would say it is the, it is the client. So the reason why it is called as client credentials is because this is the, this is the main reason. So this is the client application that is actually calling this API application. So this API application is the resource here. So basically it's the, uh, what do you say? It's, uh, if you look at here, yeah, this is the resource. So if you look at this user, this user is trying to access this resource, which is the API application through this web app, which is the client application. So this web app is the client for this resource. And then this user is using this web app, which is the client application to access this resource, which is the API application. So if you look at, if you directly map this to the AWS Cognito terminology, so this app client, which I created in the first step, this app client actually refers to this web app. And the resource server that I created here, this resource server represents this API application, api.product.example.com. So this is the resource server. And how, how this app client and the resource server is linked, that is through this app client settings. So if you go to this app client settings, I added certain scopes of that resource server to this app client. So that's how this app client and that API application, the app client, which is the web app, and the API application, which is the resource server, both are linked using that scope that I added here for that particular client, which is the product client. And what is Cognito IDP in this entire flow? It is the authorization server. So that's what they call it in the OAuth world. So that is the authorization server. So this is the authorization server. Why they call it authorization server is because this client, which is the web app, uses Cognito IDP to get the access token and then pass that access token to the API application, which in turn, again, validates the token and allows or denies access. In both these cases, if you look at like uh, the role of Cognito IDP is to generate the token and also validate like provide ways to validate the token for the resource server to make sure uh, it is secured properly. So that's why this Cognito IDP is the authorization server. So as like if I go back to the beginning of the video, I told you can basically replace this IDP with anything. So this can be a Cognito uh, like this can be a Cognito. Tomorrow you want to migrate away from Cognito? Yeah, then it's not at all a problem. It can be a Auth0 or it can be a Opta or it can be Azure AD, etc., etc. It can be anything because all these are commercial identity providers in the market, as I mentioned initially, they follow this OAuth2 RFC standard. So 
uh, of course you need to make some changes in your code to hit a different url or maybe the the endpoint might be different it might not be a slash just a slash token it can have something else as well so you might have to make some changes to your code but then whatever idp pro identity provider you use here they will follow this rfc and if you go here to this rfc you can see the uh, client credentials you can see all the details like it's a huge document you can go through it somewhere i think uh, they would have explained uh, there is a very good diagram where they explain the oauth to client credentials flow let me take let me try to find that uh, implicit grant i think it's somewhere here Correct. yeah so this is the client credentials flow so if you look at the diagram here it, here it's very very simple it just says client it calls the authorization server and gets an access token it doesn't show the resource server all those things here but if you look at this client this client is basically this web app and this authorization server in this particular video that i showed is cognito idp but it can be anything and this is the resource server uh, i hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions you can post it in my the comment section or i have a medium blog you can post your comments there as well uh, thank you for watching the video and please subscribe to my channel thank you bye